So like, check it out. Stable Diffusion VR. It's, it's like pretty cool. <laughs> this is a series of videos that have been posted to Twitter by this guy, um, Scotty Fox. So what he's done is he's created a VR world and he's made it so that all the, the image bits of that VR world are generated with stable diffusion. So like on the fly, as you're looking around, the world's changing. You can even give it prompts as you're standing there and the stable diffusion will alter the world so that it matches the new prompt as opposed to the old one. So like very cool stuff. And the question is, how does he do this? How, what's going on here? What's the technology exactly? Um, and that's what we're going to try to answer this time. I think probably the best way to start understanding what Scotty Fox is doing is to look at a much older project from August of this year, where the person generated a panorama with stable diffusion. And as you can see, as he pans around, it kind of has this nice 3D feel. It looks like you're looking into a world in a similar way that the Scotty videos do. And panoramas aren't like new technology. You, you tell the computer to generate this like cylinder and you take your image and you just project it onto that cylinder. Like I think iPhones do this automatically. Um, actually all phones probably do it automatically. Now the imagery is like projected onto this 3D cylinder. You're sitting inside the cylinder and you're looking around and you just look at a section at a time and it feels like what you're actually looking at is this like, you know, huge 3D space. And like, to a large extent, that's all that's going on here, is that you've got this 3D area that you've projected this imagery onto and you're just looking around inside that cylinder. There are some differences though. The first basic difference is that rather than a cylinder, Scotty is going ahead and projecting this imagery onto a sphere. So, you know, he can look up and down, so that's, that's good. He's using this program called Touch Designer, which I've never heard of it before, but basically it's pretty good at doing things like projecting 2D imagery onto a 3D space and making it look nice in that way. So he's using Touch Designer to create this 3D sphere. Um, in this case, we're seeing that imagery is being projected onto the outside of the sphere. But in Scotty's case, you're actually standing inside the sphere and sort of the walls of the sphere all around you are where the imagery is being projected. So yeah, kind of like that cylinder example where like you're standing inside, except it's a sphere as opposed to a cylinder. Okay, and then there's the other cool innovation, which is that rather than diffusing huge images all at once, he just diffuses small sections of the image bit by bit. And this actually creates a really cool effect because mostly the scene that you're looking at is coherent and stays the same. And when you look back in the other direction, most of what was there is still there but little bits of it keep changing. Okay, this video is probably my favorite example because like largely the scene you're looking at remains coherent and it feels like you're just looking at an environment. But the small changes that occur sort of in the corner of your vision um, keep it really interesting and engaging and you wanna sort of see where it's going. There's like this transition slowly occurring, which is really cool. Now, it seems like the reason that Scotty came up with this is that he was trying to save on resources because obviously it's easier to slowly generate small bits of an environment rather than generating them all at once. And that way you can you know, keep all the resolution really high. But I actually think that even if it didn't save resources, it's kind of a cool effect in and of itself. The technology that he's relying on here is the image to image capabilities of stable diffusion where you feed it an image along with a prompt and it will generate a different image that kind of looks like the first image. This being sort of the, the key example where you draw something silly and it gives you something nice. But what Scott's doing is he's taking sections of the environment bit, bit by bit and passing them back to stable diffusion and regenerating them so that slowly, slowly, every time one of these changes occurs, you, you gradually get a new environment. So what happens is that you take a small part of this panorama that you've just chosen basically at random. You then pass it to image to image, you know, possibly with a prompt. Image to image then generates a slightly different version of the same view, and then that gets plonked exactly at the same place again, or almost exactly the same place, so that it still looks kind of seamless. Um, and that's just happening, you know, hundreds of times a minute, I suppose. 
That's what's going on whenever you see one of these square things. It's the square being sent back to stable diffusion to do some image to image and then be put back inside the panorama. Now, I'm not 100% sure this is exactly how it's done. I haven't spoken to Scotty, but I have read a lot of his tweets and I've watched like all his videos. So I'm 99% sure that this is how it is working. He also mentioned that he's using Deform, which is like a very specific version of image to image that's been used in the past to make a whole bunch of animations for stable diffusion. So presumably that's the particular image to image algorithm that's being used. Okay, so that's what's going on here. So hopefully next time you, you look at one of these on Twitter, you won't just, your brain won't explode. You'll be like, ah, oh, I know what's going on. If you want to know more about anything else that I've talked about, the description is just a huge chunk of links. So you can peruse those at your leisure. If you have any questions or you think I've gotten something wrong or you've found something I've missed, uh, YouTube comments or Discord, that's the way to go. And uh, the other thing is thousand subs. We got to. This, this channel has a thousand subs for some reason. So that's, that's cool. That was, that was a lot faster than I was expecting. And now I have this issue because now I have to make like good content. Yeah, I'll have to have a think about that. If you have any ideas, please reach out.